I believe that the only reason why God does not take us back to heaven the moment we give our lives to the Lord is that God wants us to share the gospel with our family members, friends, fellow citizens, so that they too will be able to spend eternity with God. This means that any believer who is not consistently winning people to the Lord is one who is frustrating God's plan and purpose for his life. Often we refer to the Great Commission in Matthew 28, verse 19, that we are to go and make disciples of all nations as God giving us that mission to be evangelistic. Yet the fact is that this was a mission that Jesus has stated right from the beginning of his ministry. When Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, called Peter and his brother Andrew to be his disciples, he made clear the purpose of being a disciple of Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 19, Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That was the stated purpose of Jesus, calling them to follow him as his disciples. Every lesson learned, every encounter with miracles performed by Jesus, every example that Jesus has set for his disciples, whether in ministering to the poor or seeking to pray all night, are designed for one purpose, and that is to make them fishers of men. We see the urgency of Christ throughout his ministry to preach to the multitude, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to move from town to town, tirelessly and relentlessly to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Christ was seeking to demonstrate to the disciples the urgency of evangelism. You see, the mark of true discipleship is not how much the Bible we know, how many hours we are praying, how well we can preach, important as these disciplines may be. The mark of true discipleship is an unwavering commitment to preach the gospel with urgency and to become fishers of men. We sense this in the life and the ministry of the Apostle Paul when he said in 1 Corinthians 9.22, To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. That was the mark of Paul's discipleship, an urgency in evangelism. In the two years of the COVID lockdown and restriction, the Lord brought me to the last verse of the last chapter of the book of Isaiah. And I want to read for you Isaiah 66 verse 24. The preceding two verses describe the saints worshipping the Lord in a new heaven and new earth during Sabbath in seasons of worshipping the presence of God. But notice the last verse of the book of Isaiah in verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm does not die and their fire is not quenched. They shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. I shudder when I read verse 24. Imagine in eternity where we enjoy intimacy of relationship in, with God in exuberant worship. And yet after that, we are asked to look down to hell. And what if I see my family members, my parents, my brothers and my sisters, my cousins, my friends with whom we have spent much time eating, drinking and, and having fun together, suffering eternal torment where the worm does not die and their fire is not quenched. My heart was broken before the Lord. I was weeping before Him. And I said, God, give me a renewed sense of evangelism. Refresh me in a new way. I want to end with a word of prayer. But this prayer is a song that I learned to sing as a little boy in a Sunday school that, that, where the teacher taught me this song. And this is a song I sing often as I worship the Lord. A prayer as I begin each day. I'll sing it for you. Lead me to some soul today, O oh, teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin and cannot find their way. Few there are who seem to care, and few there are who pray. 
melt my heart and fill my life. Give me one soul today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.